Well, thanks so much for everyone for, for coming here. Um, as Irene introduced me, I'm Jono. Uh, I'm a founder of a company called Drone Deploy. And I'm here to talk about drones in agriculture. So a quick primer on drone deploy. Our focus is really to try and make drones a really simple to use tool for businesses. And we do that by doing two main things. The first thing is that we tell drones where to fly, we tell them when to capture data, and we get them to give that data to another machine. Uh, and the second part is, is that other machine. We have this cloud infrastructure that consumes a whole bunch of photographs and imagery from drones and then processes that, turns it into 2D models, into 3D models, and uh, going back to what Connor was saying, some of which we've actually 3D printed to deliver to clients. Um, the, the other thing is that when it's in this cloud, the, the data can then be analyzed to try and understand more about the world around us. And what I'm going to walk through later on today is one of those examples. So when I talk about drones, most people think, ah, oh, drones, bombs, they're going to you know, blow stuff up and kill children and things. And, and I want to really just uh, change that. We're, we're talking about commercial drones. Uh, and then people say, well, what is a commercial drone? And ever since Jeff Bezos got uh, that 60 Minutes piece, everyone thinks, ah, commercial drones, Amazon Prime Air, it's all about delivery. And delivery is definitely happening. Those guys are working on it. They're doing some pretty incredible things. But there's so much more. There are dozens of industries and hundreds of use cases that drones are impacting today. We at Drone Deploy tend to work mainly in agriculture, construction, mining, and insurance. Uh, but there are just dozens and dozens of um, industries that, that are leveraging this stuff. So if we just focus on agriculture for the moment. Agriculture, when people started thinking about drones, it was the same as it was with Amazon, right? Everyone was thinking, it's all going to be about delivery. But instead of books and toothbrushes, it was going to be delivering pesticides and trying to put fertilizer on fields. And this has been done in Japan for decades, actually, where they all have these aerial robots deliver precisely pesticides and fertilizer to the areas that need it the most. But if you think, how are we going to get this to all farms all around the world, there is one major challenge, is that if you're going to be carrying lots of fertilizer, it's going to have to be quite big. And these drones are pretty scary. I, I certainly want to, wouldn't want to fly one of these by myself. So, you know, these kind of complicated and expensive machines are not necessarily going to be the ones that are going to be pervasive in changing the agricultural industry from this kind of grassroots effort. What we're instead seeing is that these drones need to be small enough to fit in the back of a truck that you can take out into the field, something that you can just throw up into the air and let it launch and fly and start collecting data. And funnily enough, the, the most popular drone used in industry today is actually about $1,000 that you can buy from your local shopping mall. This is the DJI Phantom 3. So what are all these drones doing if they're not delivering? Well, they're actually they're creating these digital snapshots of the world. They're carrying stuff, but the most valuable thing, they're carrying information. And if we stop and think a little bit about what these digital snapshots are and what they mean, for the first time, it used to be you know, incredibly expensive to get satellites and manned aviation, uh, to get a helicopter to fly over to try and capture some data. And you had to plan this ahead of time. You had to request it, and they'd bundle a whole bunch of requests and come back two weeks later. What we can do now is enable the everyman for the price that they would pay for a single flight with a manned aircraft. They can now own all of the hardware and software themselves to operate for an entire year and collect data whenever they want and whenever they need. So to walk through an example of some of this data that they're out there busy collecting, I thought I'd go through this agricultural case study that we did a couple months ago. Oops, sorry, that's backwards. <laughs> so I thought, well, I'm, I'm coming to Ireland. I'll pick the, the case study on potatoes and try and be a bit relevant. Um, that's a joke. So I want to introduce Derek. Derek's an agronomist. He's from North Dakota. And Derek, interestingly, was the only agronomist in his area that used drones in 2014. But when we spoke to him earlier this year, uh, he said that all of the, ag the agronomists in his area are now actually starting to use drones. So the mission that Derek's been given today for this case study is looking at this potato field in, in North Dakota 
And the grower is trying to decide between two different varietals of this, this potato. He's basically A-B testing potatoes. And the, the type in the north is a little bit different to the type in the south in that the type in the north doesn't store quite as well. The type in the south, uh, type B, stores better. And so this grower is elected to plant type B across his entire, uh, his entire farm of about 10,000 acres. And he's asked Derek to come in and basically try to help figure out, should I plant type A or type B next year? And are there any other issues that you can see on my field? So what Derek did is he elected to use a drone called an Ag Eagle, which is one of our other partners. And the Ag Eagle is quite special. Uh, it's the one that kind of fits in the back of the truck that you saw earlier. Uh, it has a catapult to launch it, because launching these things can be quite hard. Uh, so there's an easy way of just put it down, press go. But this Ag Eagle has got a little extra special something. Uh, we've put an LTE modem inside it, so it's connected to the internet. That means that you know, in our office at Drone Deploy HQ in San Francisco, we can see all the drones around the world that is really flying, and we can, we can get that data off of them while they're still in the air. And this means that we can start delivering processed data to Derek before the drone has even landed. This is incredibly powerful. You know, it sounds cool, you know, oh, it's Skynet, we've got drones, flying robots on the internet, that's amazing. But Derek's driving three plus hours to get out to one of these fields, and he's visiting a ton of fields in the day. He can't come back home after the end of the day and try and sit down at home and process all of this data by himself. He needs to have this really scale. And you know, for this to be most useful, when Derek's out there in the field, he wants to be able to look at this data, and he wants to be able to say, where should I be going? What should I be looking at? Instead of just randomly walking around to try and identify problems. Having this when the data is available to him before it lands, is incredibly powerful to enable this. So taking a look at what that data looks like, this is what we call an NDVI image. So NDVI stands for Normalized Differential Vegetation Index. It's, a, it's something that NASA came up with in the 70s when they had some satellites traveling around the world to try and measure the average health of crops. And it, it uses something quite interesting. It looks at the near-infrared reflectance of a crop and compares it to the visible spectrum. And what happens is that sick plants tend to absorb near-infrared, whereas healthy plants tend to reflect it. And so comparing those ratios between the sick and the healthy, we can understand how healthy the plants are. Now, this kind of changes from day to day based on atmospheric conditions, based on lighting conditions, those kinds of things. Uh, but for a given snapshot of a field, we can compare across that field. So the first thing that we notice is that type A seems to be winning. Um, you know, what we've done here on Journal Play is taken the scale and converted it from just a number to red is dead and green is good. And you can see that type A seems to be a little bit healthier than, than type B does. Um, and the other thing that you'll probably notice is, wow, there's a lot of, there's a lot of red. Uh, his crops don't seem to be doing so well. And this was because this was taken in late June this year, where there was a, a serious amount of rain damage and flooding in North Dakota. And again, just highlighting the power of being able to, as soon as it happens, go out there and start capturing what the damage is and quantifying that damage. Derek was also able to zoom in a bit more and to try and identify some other issues on the field. Uh, one of the issues that he identified, this is kind of like the medium zoom, kind of enhance, uh, he can see that there are these stripes going across the field, these streaks. And this is a sign that the planting machine is malfunctioning. It's kind of skipping entire rows. The grower is actually putting thousands and thousands of dollars per acre in terms of fertilizer into the field to make sure that these potatoes are going to grow well. And if this machine is missing out on these fields, uh, there's just so much missed opportunity in terms of revenue. If we go super enhanced and we go to the you know, individual plant level, we can see that this planting machine, again, is malfunctioning. Every single one of those little blank spots that I've highlighted there, I eventually got tired of putting arrows down. But each one of those is a missed opportunity. It's a missed potato. And scaling this across the entire field, we can see, or the entire um, farm that he has, we can see that this is a major issue, given that his farm is around 10,000 acres. Now, the grower will first off say, oh, well, you know, this is not that big a problem. These planting machines are expensive. They cost you know, half a million dollars or something like that. But he's putting about two to $3,000 per acre into his fields and he's trying to leverage about 4,000 an acre in terms of the sales at the other end. And when you, when you multiply this across the 10,000 acres that he has, you know, he's, he's just spending 
tens of millions of dollars trying to uh, put all these potatoes in the ground. And so the half million dollar planting machine is actually not that big a deal when he's missing out on all these opportunities. So Derek's obviously asked to try and quantify these issues and see how big of a problem it really is. And this is something that we have on Drone Deploy, which allows you to go out there and, and figure out uh, how much of a problem certain things are. And the way that Derek does this is he, he does something called ground truthing. He goes into the field, he looks at the health of one of these plants, he looks on Drone Deploy and sees you know, what is the NDVI number for this particular spot. And then he can write that down. He can say, all right, well, that looks, that looks good. And we can look at another plant and say, well, that's bad. And what he does is he finds these kind of threshold points. And so you can see there he's decided that 0 0.26 is the threshold from bad to OK, and that 0 0.39 is between OK and good. And by leveraging that, he can then immediately quantify and see how big of a problem this water damage really is and how much better the north is than the south. So this is the kind of power that these drones are delivering to agriculture. But I wanted to kind of step back. Uh, oh, sorry. Just on, just on that field there, we're looking at about $160,000 in lost revenue by, by taking the damage that the planting machines, the malfunctions, and this water damage from the incorrect selection of the potatoes is. And applying that to the rest of the field, there's just a huge opportunity in terms of what he could be getting back. And this is from a single flight of a drone that costs you know, under $10,000. Going back to all of the different industries that we were talking about earlier and thinking about how, how this massive impact is on just a single farm in North Dakota, and we look at where these drones can be changing the world in other places, I wanted to kind of have a think. What happens now that we have this cheap labor in the sky, that you know, this third dimension has always been inaccessible to people, and it's been very expensive to try and get into a helicopter or into an aircraft to fly around to try and see the world around us from this aerial perspective. All of those issues that Derek was seeing earlier weren't really possible to see if, if you were on the ground. You have like, such a shallow field of view that when you look to try and find a missing row, it just disappears. And now you can just launch this robot that you can buy off Amazon or you can get at Best Buy and it can fly around and it can digitize this world and it can provide you insights on demand. It really is incredible to think what the future is going to hold, given that we can now create these 3D models of the world around us, or these 2D models, and, and measure and monitor stuff on demand. The feedback cycle that these guys in agriculture used to have was, I will plant, I will harvest, and I will see what the yield difference is. And normally that A-B testing is done at the yield stage at the end of the season. And then that drives the decision making for the next season. So that feedback loop has typically been an entire season's worth. Whereas now we can go out there and fly this, and we can get this information on demand cheaply, and let these people make decisions on the daily, maybe even weekly basis. I don't have time to talk about much more, but we have a bunch of these case studies on blog.drondeploy.com, and I'd really encourage you guys to go and take a look. And if you have a drone, uh, you can also start processing on Drone Deploy for free. Uh, you can just sign up at drondeploy.com. Thanks very much. I'll be over there if anyone has any questions.